Expect the best used car deals guaranteed. Visit arnoldclark.com. Welcome to the football show on PLZ Soccer, sponsored by Arnold Clark. I'm Gabriel Antoniazzi. Another day, another set of fantastic guests here with me in the studio. Darren Jackson, Hugh McDonald and Alan Ruff. Got that one right today, Ruffy. We will be looking at the new Hearts manager, Daniel Stendel. So yesterday, Hearts unveiled their new manager, the 45-year-old German Daniel Stendel, to the media. He spoke to us, as well as the owner and Budge, which we'll get on to later. But first of all, let's have a look on why Budge felt Stendel was the right man for the job. Track record, uh, but almost more importantly, um, his passion, uh, which came across very, very clearly during the interv interview process. As well as that, I think we decided we wanted to try something a little bit different. So Anne Budge there explaining why she felt Stendhal was the right man for the job. Before I come to Stendhal himself and the attributes he'll bring, Darren Jackson, I'll start with you, former Hearts player. Was Budge right to wait to get her right man? 100%, yes. They're obviously, the fans in the club are hoping this isn't going to be short term. This is going to be long term. So they've done well, they've gone through uh, the process of interviewing other managers um, that are out of job um, and if the, she's picked this one and thought this, this is the right fit for Hearts. Um, so he's coming to a wonderful training ground, an incredible stadium and it's normally filled every week. Um, so I think he's, they've picked a good guy and um, he's got a great job. Yeah. Hugh, do you agree that it was right to sacrifice the points now? Levine was sacked all the way back at the end of October. They've been on very poor form since then. They have, and I don't think part of our thinking would have been sacrificing that many points. I think the, the, the tumble would have been slightly surprising. I think she would probably thought there was enough to <laughs> not quite go down that slippery slope. But the fact of the matter is, this is a decision that you've really got to get right. Now, it's impossible. It's impossible to get a manager with your own decision right, no matter what you do. But you can give yourself better odds if you do your due diligence, you do, you're waiting about, you go and you do your interviewing, you can cut the odds down. And I think they're right because you've got to remember the last two appointments haven't worked out and, and uh, they really needed one to work out. They really need Stendhal to work out. Because as Darren says, this is a big, big club with a great fan base, <coughs> great ambitions um, for, for Europe and beyond. Uh, so, yeah, I think she's right, and I don't think the risk was so great because I don't think Hearts will be in any relegation trouble. No, Ruffy, are you in agreement there? Yeah, I would agree with that. Uh, I think uh, a lot of the players are lacking in confidence, and quite rightly so, after the run that they've been on. A new guy coming in with a new voice in the dressing room will lift them, uh, and I would expect them to start winning games. You know, how, how far they go up the table remains to be seen, but I think they've got the right kind of uh, manager in. I think we all would agree we like the German style of, you know, the way they play football. And if he can instill that into the, the Hearts players, I think it'll be a bonus. OK, so Stendel is in, but the one question remains, and that's compensation. Barnsley, Stendel's former club, have said that they feel they are owed money uh, because he's still on gardening leave per se. Now, Budge doesn't think they'll need to pay anything. She explains why just here. I'm satisfied that at this point in time we've had nothing to suggest that there is any compensation uh, due and on that basis I'm carrying on. So Hart's expecting to pay nothing. Ruffy, you've been on boards before. Do you believe her when she says if they're confident with what their lawyers think they won't have to pay a penalty? No, I think this will go further. You know, I think uh, Barnsley will probably want to get something. I don't know what road you would go down or what, what you would do. But I don't think this is uh, done and dusted. We, we don't, we're not privy to what's in a contract. We're not privy to what, what was happening uh, behind the scenes. But if this club is determined that Hearts owe money, I think it'll go further. And Barnsley this morning were very strong 
Uh, yeah, in their statement. In their sta you know, they were very strong, so they, they, they would look to, to think that they have some kind of a case. But, uh, but the good thing for Hearts is that can rumble on, but it rumbles on in the background. good thing is they've got a guy in the training ground tomorrow morning and they move on from that. Yeah. Darren, as a former player, you don't think that will have any effect on, on the pitch, on, on Stendhal himself, if it does rumble on, the payment that could possibly be due? No, that, what happens in boardrooms doesn't really affect players unless it's financially and they're not getting their wages. But the players will just get on with their job. Then they'll know in the last few games they've probably let themselves down. They have let themselves down. Um, but there's a new guy in, as Ruffy said, a new voice. Um, and they'll be wanting to get points on the table as, as quick as possible because, you know, the, f the longer it goes, the harder it gets. But I, I, I think they've got a great squad. I think they've got a really good squad. They've got experience in there. They've got youth. Um, and again, as the boys were saying, confidence has been a huge thing. You just need that one win to really kickstart you. OK, we'll come back to you with that in a second, Darren. First of all, let's hear from the German himself. The trust. My person, my personality, my, my idea to play football. And uh, I think um, all what I heard before from, from the heart. And uh, yeah, you can see when you, when you uh, uh, go through the stadium, it's a nice stadium, uh, really good supporters. And uh, all what I heard before I signed and after I signed uh, and uh, social media was so, so great, so positive. And, um, I hope I can bring the success back to, to the Hearts. There's no doubt that Hearts have a big squad with plenty of experienced players. They are underperforming. Dan, do you think he's the right man that can get them winning, firing them up the table? Well, according to people down in Barnsley, they, they, they liked him. He went, he, he went his last 10 games without a win. And there was a bit of an uproar when he got sacked. So he's obviously got something. Um, and according to, again, people speaking to people down there, it's good man management. And that's what you need now. You need to, you'll need to go in there to try and lift the players. Tactically, he'll do stuff on the training pitch, but confidence, as we've just mentioned a few times, um, he'll need to try and lift them. And again, put your arm around them and just try and get the best out of the players just now until you get your implement your tactics and all that um, into the... Is that the first thing he has to do? Just try and lift the players, give them the confidence? Of course you do, yeah. yeah. Um, because <laughs> we've said many times tonight um, that it's low. Um, so that first and foremost, because they are good players, um, and they just need their confidence list, lifted, and uh, I've no doubt they'll start winning games. Okay. Now, when he did his interview with the club TV yesterday, the, the word "gegenpressen" was used, which mm. is always used when talking about German managers. Hugh, I want to come to you here. You uh, you watch quite a lot of German football. Do you think that the gegenpressing, the German, the high press style, can work here in Scotland? I think it can. You know, it certainly, and, and has to a certain extent. I mean, Brendan Rodgers, uh, you know, when Celtic were uh, out of possession, would press high. Uh, I think what it does, what it does, demand of the players is it demands a first of all tactical discipline and shape. So you'll have to work on that in training. Everybody will have to be on the same shape because one guy can't go early or two can't go early and, and leave the vulnerable. Another thing, it places a, a, a premium on confidence because the, you know, the first pass in possession can be a risky one, you know, and you've got to go for it sometimes. Uh, so, but I think it can work. I think it'll take a bit of work. Uh, but they've got really good experienced players. I mean, he's not going to come in there and, and talk into naive guys. I mean, there's some young guys in there, Hickey, Cochran, Smith, etc. There are young guys, but there's also guys like Whelan, Naismith, Berra, Suter, Igpe Atsu, I mean, uh, Washington. I mean, these are guys that, are, you know, they've been about the game, so they, they'll, they'll know the principles that have been... But yeah, I, th I, think, I don't think that's a, that'll be an issue. Uh, OK, so Stendhal does need to push them up the table. Here's how he explains and he's going to do it. For me, it's important that we change the attitude from the player on the pitch. And when we can do the, uh, this, then I think uh, we have a good chance to, to win the games. And, uh, and in, in, uh, in the break in January, I think we have a big chance to uh, change uh, things. OK, we can have a look at the league table now. Now, Hearts are down there. Uh, they are only or above the drop themselves on goal difference. Now, all three of you are in agreement they have a strong squad and that if they can get playing, they'll fire up the table. Ruffy, do you expect them to be nearer the top six sooner than later? 
Uh, I don't think it'll be uh, sooner. I think it'll be later. You know, that's a big, yeah. big gap to claw back. You know, obviously there's a lot of big, important games coming up. Uh, I'll have a derby game coming up as well, uh, which will be important. I think they'll be around about six, something like that. You know, but that would need probably Kilmarnock to probably lose a bit of form to drop out of that. And they're looking as if they might, you know, start to waver a wee bit. But, you know, they would have to go on a right good run. You know, it's, it's, it's a hard one to... You know, to, to claw that amount of points back. Hugh, is there any threat of relegation? Not for me. No, I mean, there's always... <laughs> I, always I always think that when people always say they're too good to go down, you always say, no, they're not, they're down. I mean, football's, a, football's an easily measured game in terms of quality. Just look, uh, just count up the points at the end of the season. But I would, I would have no fears about them going down at the moment. Honestly, I think they've got a good, strong squad. They've got the capacity to, and at Christmas, to, to, to uh, if when Stedo comes in and says, right, I need this, I need that, and I need the next thing, they can bring in a few. I, I, I think sixth or seventh for me. Mm -hmm. And Darren, how huge can the games, five until uh, the new year, how huge can games against Hibs and Celtic be? If he can win those games, get the fans back on side, the players on side, how, how, how important could that be going forward? Well, you're going to win the Hibs game and you'll get fans back on side. Mm -hmm. Um, to say go and beat Hibs and go and beat Celtic, that's a hard task. Yeah, of you know course. I mean, it's just um, take and, and as we all, we all say, it's boring. You just take one game at a time and, and just go and try and win the first game to give yourself confidence to go into the to the second game. But the, the, the derby is always is always massive and it will give him some breathing space if he does win that. But Hibs are going well, so they'll be looking at the, the exact same. So um, he just has to start trying to get his first win, and, and as I say. Um, try and get a bit of confidence back from the players, implement his style, how he's how he's going to play, um, and they'll be looking. There's no doubt they'll be looking to bring bring people in. But there is a big gap between. Um, I'm thinking the top six, but there's ten points there. So, um, but I do think they'll be further up, um, as as you say, six, seven yeah. at, um, at the end of the season. Okay, so it's all very positive. But the question that I have is. Will Stendhal perhaps feel there's too much of the old guard still there? John Daly is still going to be there in the back room, as well as Austin <coughs> McPhee at the moment. And we know that Levine is still upstairs. Could he have his hands tied at all, Hugh? I don't think so. I think he'll, he'll have been... Um... I think it'll have been animated enough in the discussions with Anne Budge to get certain insurances about uh, things. I mean, as we know, Craig Levine's lame duck. He's gone at the end of the season. Uh, so it's just a matter of... I mean, she's now in, going to be, as she said herself, going to be in conversations about who's going to be the sporting director. So I don't see that... And he'll probably be given a clear hand about, um, you know, his own staff. Will, uh, will McPhee, will McPhee join Hughes at, um, uh, down at uh, Stoke? Will, will, he, will he, is there a job for him full time at Northern Ireland? Is there certain other things? I wouldn't be surprised if Austin McPhee left. I think for Austin himself, actually, I think it might be a good thing for him to leave. I think, mm -hmm. he, you know, I think it might be a matter of, you know, a nice cut, go to a new phase in his life. OK, so all positive from the three men here. No poison chalice uh, before we move on to the rest of the show. Here's how you can win our quiz. If you'd like to win this unique Lionel Messi signed Barcelona top, subscribe to our YouTube channel PLZ Soccer and we'll announce the winner on Friday, 20th of December. Good luck. Moving on to Celtic now, and their manager, Neil Lennon, has been in praise of Fraser Forster. No surprises, really. Man of the match performance, which won his side the League Cup on Sunday. Lennon believes, as said that uh, he'd love to see him sign permanently. Now, of course, that's a big issue uh, with the financial implications. He also wants to see an England recall for Forster. Let's start with the financial side of things from Celtic's point of view. Ruffy, can you see Forster ever coming back to Parkhead permanently? Well, I think all the supporters would like to see him back there. Neil Lennon would like to see him back. But as you've just touched on it there, it's a financial uh, package that has to suit Celtic. And, uh, you know, we're not privy again to... You know what Southampton are thinking. You know they prepared to cut their losses. Uh, he's obviously not going to go back there, so it has to be a deal that suits everybody. But I think at the end of the day, 
Fraser Foster wants to play football, you know, so it might cost him an awful lot of money if he goes to Celtic. Hugh, can you give us any insight to the kind of payment structure that Celtic have at the moment? Well, I, I don't think, I mean, Celtic's uh, wage stocks went up to, you know, middle 50 millions uh, under Brendan Rodgers. There was definite, definite imperative to reduce that. Um, so they're, they're not in, they're not on the lookout for 30,000 plus players, let's put it that way. And it would take 30,000 plus in the, in, in the best will in the world to uh, attract Fraser Foster. I mean, he's going to get offers in excess of that. He's also got two and a half years to run on a deal which is said, I don't know it because I haven't seen his pay slip, but it's said to be worth £70,000 a week. You know, And it's not an absurd thing to think that an England goalkeeper in, at Southampton would be earning that kind of money. So that chasm is huge. Uh, and... It may be unbridgeable uh, unless unless they can come some some deal about the, the you know that some of the transfer money comes to Foster. Darren, as a former player, but more importantly as a former agent, how do you can you see that any way it can be structured at all? A complicated deal, anything? Well, it can it can be structured. Um, it depends what they're going to pay for them. If they're if they're paying if they're going to pay eights or nines. Um, Southampton obviously don't want them now, so they don't want a, a, a if you use right seventy thousand. They don't want a keeper coming back as on seventy thousand to sit in the stand. Um, so could they give him a lump, a lump sum to leave, a golden handshake, and then Celtic possibly give him what they can go to, and maybe a five-year deal, five and a half-year deal, or whatever. So there is a chance it could happen, but um, and it looks as though the boy want, wants it to happen, but he's maybe going to have to take a wee bit of a pay cut mm. if. Um, he wants to be at Celtic for the next how long? It puts uh, uh, two hundred pound a week into significant, mm. doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> we're talking about. <laughs> you were talking. Ruffy was telling me earlier his first his first Scotland call up, sixty quid he got for it. Sixty quid and a fish supper and a bottle of bread. But Ruffy, as, as a former Scotland keeper, do you think that Forster could be thinking games like that, high profile, that could get me back in England? Of squad? course, yeah, of course, and, and that and playing at uh, top uh, tournaments, your Champions League and games like that. You know, obviously, there's the you have to attract the eye, you know, because he's not he's not going to come to games that you're playing in because he'll be going around England looking at all the the players down in there, so. He's going to have to you know, do something spectacular, but things like that are spectacular at the weekend. And his 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 performances have been very good, particularly in Europe this year as well. So they're the kind of games that could get him back in. Mm. Hugh Down, do you think it's a high enough level here in this country that he could attract Southgate? Mm. You play with Celtic, and you play with one of the biggest clubs in the world. And the game that he played in on Sunday, and when he plays at Ibrox and plays at Celtic Park and Old Firm games, he'll not play in a bigger game down there. So they're, they're, they're massive games. And that's the ones that you'll be judged on. Europa League, you'll be judged on. Um, but he can only do what he did on Sunday and hopefully gather Southgate. And I think he deserves it. And not only, I said in the programme last week with, with Barry, he was, a, a, he was a very good keeper when he was first about. But I think he's come back a far better keeper, mm -hmm. uh, even before Sunday. I thought he looked a much a, a more accomplished, accomplished keeper um, coming for things and shot stopping and all that. And I, I do think his time in England has benefited him. One of the interesting things I think is I didn't know why Neil Lennon got him. Because, uh, you know, if you, if you not any uh, sort of judgment in Foster, because he's a fantastic goalkeeper, I said, but does Celtic really need another goalkeeper? They've got two international goalkeepers already in the squad. And do they need a third? And he's, <laughs> he's proved it completely and utterly wrong because Celtic are sitting at the top of the Europa League group and they've got a, basically a friendly uh, on Thursday because, to a large extent, of Foster. They've won the League Cup again, to a large extent, for Foster and all the psychological help that comes with that. So it's been a terrific move. But it's been a terrific move for Foster as well because... If they can come to some kind of near agreement, you know, near agreement, what's he going to be doing in his life? He's not going to be sitting third place and playing, in, you know, in, in Southampton A team away to Biscombe Rovers or something like that. He's playing against the Lazio's, and who knows who they're going to be playing in the last 32 of the Europa League. Yeah, we'll have to wait and see with that one, whether Celtic do make their move for Forster in January or not. Talking about uh, Scottish players down in England, 
Arsenal's Kieran Tierney suffered a suspected dislocated shoulder in last night's victory over West Ham. Now, if it is dislocated, Arsenal haven't confirmed anything yet. He could be out for three or four months, meaning he could miss Scotland's crucial March playoffs against Israel and perhaps a final aiming for Euro 2020. Now, we've spoken a lot about Kieran Tierney, how we would bring him in and play him as a centre-half. How big a miss could he be already for Steve Clark? Well, I'm thinking, I'm hoping that this is just a wee bit hysterical uh, because I thought, you know, shoulder blades just get put back in again and you get the, the treatment that they get now in modern day football. I wouldn't have thought this is going to be a four month injury that he's picked up here. So let's hope that isn't the case because we really do need him for the playoffs. Same. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm just wondering though that, the, the, you know, uh, I'm thinking over the years that um, Kieran's had problems with his shoulder and I'm just wondering if uh, if Arsenal want to nip it in the bud and maybe I, I have no reason to say this but maybe you know long term say right we nip it in the bud and we do surgery and we, we sort this out that's a possibility for saying three or four months because again dislocation normally is, is is a much shorter injury than that and can be addressed with proper strapping if it's, mm -hmm. a, it's a fallibility in your body. Yeah, that, that, that is the, the fear that they will just have surgery because it, mm. apparently that's been going under the radar. Arsenal wanted to speak about it because of the hernia that he had in the summer, but now that the shoulder problem could come back to Horton. Brian Robson, of course, used to have shoulder problems, didn't he? A few World Cup games he missed because of that, but unfortunately, that's all we have time for. Um, thank you very much for joining us today. Don't forget, you can subscribe, share, like, follow all of our social media channels below. Finally, it's a thank you to the three guests. Uh, we've managed to get through another day without Peter. And uh, thank you most of all to you at home for watching. We'll see you again at the same time tomorrow. Expect the best used car deals guaranteed. Visit arnoldclark.com.